Hi, welcome to the Hannah G Knits podcast. Thanks for watching. Thank you for joining me today. Um, it has been a while since I have posted an episode um, on YouTube. We have just um, kind of been sick for a while. <laughs> uh, my son was sick and then I was sick. And so, yeah, we just had a lot going on. And um, I didn't have a lot of knitting um, because I was just kind of, we were in survival mode. So I'm back, I have some knits and I am excited to share them with you. So for my finished objects today, I know I have talked about this a lot, but <laughs> I had a pattern come out yesterday. Um, it is Ollie's Classic Crew. It's a crew neck sweater. So it's a crew neck sweater um, for babies and kids from like newborn to 10 years. I think there's nine different sizes. Um, it has these little folded, folded hems, um, and neckband, and then also on the, the waist is folded as well. Um, so that just came out yesterday, Wednesday. Um, and so far, um, everyone has been so kind and welcoming of my, my new pattern. And, um, this one was special because I was able to use... Pearl Soho Goodwool, and that's one of my favorite yarns, and um, I, I'm sure you've heard me talk about it. I talk about it all the time. <laughs> um, it's, a, for me, it fits in my budget, and it's almost like what someone might say, like a workhorse yarn. Um, I just, it works really well for me. <laughs> um, it's sturdy. It's, you know, it's that good blend between rustic and overly soft. I just really enjoy knitting with it. Um, it's an in-between weight. So it's not like bulky, but it's not fingering. Um, so I believe, I think I wrote this for like a DK, um, sport to DK. So anyway, you can find it on Ravelry. It's also on Pay, Pay Hip if Ravelry is not accessible for you. And um, so I shared uh, yesterday some content. And then by the time this is posted, you'll be able to see like my um, tester pictures and um I just love working with test knitters and um, this was a great group of test knitters. Everybody was on it. <laughs> um, some of them were able to finish their projects, which is okay. Um, I don't ask always for like a complete project and I try to be really understanding because I know like we, it's often when you are knitting a children's design, it means you have kids. So <laughs> sometimes things happen. Um, so. Not all of them are gonna be posted, but I'll just keep sharing them. If you follow the hashtag, you can see them. Um, someone knit theirs in a non-solid yarn. They used like a variegated yarn. I don't know if it was variegated or self-striping, but it was so cute. Um, so I will share that when she puts, puts a picture on Instagram, I'll reshare it. Um, anyway, thank you. If you have purchased the pattern, thank you so much um, for doing that. Um, or add it to your favorites or save my post, whatever you want to do. I just appreciate the support. Um, it means a lot to me. This is Ollie's. He will be wearing it this fall. It looks very cute on him. Um, I think he really likes it. Um, it hasn't been cool enough here. I'm wearing this sweater because the AC is running, but it's very hot outside. <laughs> um, okay. So that came out. That's why I'm sharing it. Um, another finished object. I finished this forever ago. Um, it is just released today though. Um, it got delayed because of, as they say, supply chain issues <laughs> with the yarn company, but it's by Amy Schur and, um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it because I don't want to mess it up, but it's this beautiful cabled piece. It's kind of like a cowl, but like it goes over your neck. Seems very like... I don't know, it's like very on trend or high fashion. So it's, um, the collaboration is with Wolf, Wolf, Wolf Folk, I believe, the yarn company. And they didn't have the yarn to release the pattern. So it got delayed, like, I don't know. I can't remember when I knit this. Maybe a year ago, honestly, over a year ago. Um, but anyway, it's out now, which is awesome. 
and it's beautiful. It sort of goes along with, the cables are very similar to the um, like vest pattern um, that Amy has. And one of the cool things is that the cables go into the ribbing. So I don't know, that's just like attention to detail. I love that, that's awesome. Um, I didn't wear it last winter because I don't know, I was afraid I was gonna like post a screenshot or like post a picture <laughs> of myself in it and I didn't wanna give it away. Um, but I used um, Cascade Eco Wool and it's technically bulky, um, but I met the gauge with it. So um, I don't remember what the pattern calls for, but I just got the undyed colorway and then um, I dyed it with avocado pits. And this is the first time that I like dyed something and then kept it and I just, I think it turned out really well. I wanna try some more. I actually love, yeah, I love this color. Um, obviously, since I'm like, <laughs> I love this like dusty pink. I would wear this all the time, but I'm not sure. It's a little, I think I knit the smallest size. It's a little long for my torso um, because I was testing it. I didn't feel comfortable making like a lot of um, modifications. So it's a little long, so I might see if it fits like my mom or my sister better. Um, but if I knit it, I would definitely knit it again. And if I did, I think I would do two back panels um, to just make it like a little bit shorter because I'm only like five feet, one inch. And so it gets caught like if I'm wearing pants, like I would get caught in my pants or in my jacket. Um, and so I think I would just shorten it next time. Um, and there might even be that modification in there. I just didn't want to modify it because... <laughs> I wanted to be able to give like appropriate feedback. Um, but anyway, it's an awesome pattern. The cables are beautiful, delightful. I've never knit cables flat and the pattern was so great. I had no trouble with it. Um, yeah, so it's out today, yesterday, um, but yes. Okay, so I don't think I have any more finished objects. It's really been light knitting for me lately um, because I had the pattern launch and um, that is really like, emotionally draining for me because um I mean I know for every designer especially um you know ones that are like freelance or just kind of finding time in their day to do this like I am I um I just I don't know it takes a lot out of me to do the content like writing the copy and sending the emails and getting feedback from my like accountability fiber group and um yeah, so I, it just like drained me. I just couldn't do anything for a while <laughs> when I was putting together that content um, because the patterns mean a lot to me. And so putting them out there is, is hard um, because I don't want them to be <laughs> rejected. It's like an extension of myself, but also something for my son. And so it's, it just makes it really special to me. So everyone has been very kind, but that was draining. And then I was putting together the test knit for my snow globe sweater. So I just notified the testers um, and if you weren't chosen to test, I'm so sorry. I did have a lot more testers than, um, I expected, than I thought I would have. Um, and so I tried to keep a balance of new testers, old testers, not old, but like <laughs> previously, um, tested test knitters. Um, and then also I just try to keep honoring like that time of, of application. But, um, so I was putting stuff together for that, getting that pattern sent out, editing that, and so, yes, I think I may have, um, I don't know, it was kind of a lot. I also have another test running for my back to school sock set and those are starting to be finished up and shared on Instagram. And um, I think that's the most um, patterns I've ever had like going at once. So I don't have a lot of like finished objects. So I'm sorry about that, but I do have one sort of finished objects. I have a lot of works in progress. <laughs> um, so this is a, one of my back to school socks. Um, I'm not like testing my own design, but I'm definitely knitting it along with my dusters. <laughs> but I knit these for my son. So these are the size two year. Um, and I used the recommended yarn, which is the Knit Pick Stroll. So I did the two year, and then in the pattern I offer, like if you know the size of your child's shoe or the, the recipient's shoe, 
then um, I share like the length based on that shoe size. So I knit Ollie a size two years circumference, but to the length of a US five shoe size. So they fit him really well, perfectly actually, which I'm like, ooh, he's starting to grow really fast. Like just in the last couple of weeks, he's, um, well, he's a very small little guy, so it's not like he's grown that much, but he outgrew his size four shoes, which he's worn for as long as I can, as long as he's been wearing shoes. Um, so he just outgrew them. So I'm like, maybe I should have knit a size bigger or at least like made them longer, but that's okay. They're so cute. <laughs> I will make a bunch more. It took me like uh, maybe two days. I don't know. Um, so that's one. I need to knit the other, but I haven't yet. And yeah, if you um, haven't watched some of my previous podcast episodes, I talk about the back to school sock set, which will be coming out in maybe early to mid September. Um, basically, um, I shared that sometimes I had a hard time at school when I was a little kid and I would wear different fun socks and um, that like my parents would gift me or I'd pick out with them and I'd wear them for like basketball games or you know whatever, things like that and wear them to school. And so it felt like, you know, there's someone with me who loves me, I can do this. And so that's the intention behind the back to school socks, whether you have a confident little one or a nervous little one, or whatever. One of my test knitters knit them for her mom, who's a teacher, which I think is so cool because teachers are like heroes, right? Actual heroes and also educating our children. So thank you, teachers. Um, I used to be an instructional assistant for um, first graders, which was the most fun I ever had. <laughs> but anyway, um, that was not a shout out to myself. That was just like, I have seen teachers hard at work um, Ollie's not in school yet, but um, just watching teachers. Yeah, so thank you. Anyway, all of that to say, these are like a tangible gift to your little one to say, I love you, you can do it, and I'm with you. Okay, so now for more works in progress. I did get my needles back from my sister, so I can now work on the sleeves for um, my color work sweater. And I can't say that I've made a lot of progress since the last time I shared. I think I showed you this. And I finished the body and bound off. And then I have made like an inch or two on this one sleeve. And that's all that I have done. Oh, you see my stitch marker? I will link that shop. I think she's having an update soon. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? Just my hand? I don't know. Um, because I love these stitch markers. Anyway, I will link that because I love these stitch markers. So I haven't made that much progress, but I got my noodles back, so I'm excited to finish that up. I'm not super in a hurry. Um, this is the Kirti sweater, and I'm knitting it in Pearl Soho Goodwill, <laughs> as I shared before, um, that I love it. And yeah, I just, I loved the color work and I'm excited to just do the stockinette arms, or sleeves, finish it up. I'm trying to decide a lot of the samples or tester photos show like a contrast color ribbing for the sleeve. I haven't decided yet. I feel like that makes it a little more of a statement and I'm not like, I don't make a lot of statements <laughs> with my clothing choice. So the color work itself is a statement. So trying to decide if I want to, um, make this the um, sleeves pink or just make it all green. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Let me know if you think I should um, make the sleeves pink or the ribbing pink. So that's my Kirti sweater. I'm very excited. I definitely have enough yarn for this, so that is awesome. No yarn chicken will be played with this sweater. Um, another work in progress. I don't think I even shared this last time. Oh, I know. I shared that I had wanted to make a sweater out of my Pearl Soho, um, I can't remember what this is. Sweetgrass. Pearl Soho Sweetgrass. And I thought about, like, maybe designing my own because I had a really specific, um, you know, desires for what I wanted it to be like. But... Um, 
after I started thinking about that, I was like, I don't really want to design myself a sweater that I'm just going to knit. And then like, I don't have any plans to make an adult, you know, sweater pattern. So anyway, I was like, I'm just going to make another cumul cumulus tee and then modify it to how I want. So I knit on this for like six days straight. That was all I knit. I just wanted to see how much progress I could make. I wanted to finish it by, um, I don't know, like the next couple of weeks. We're going out of town later. Um, and so I thought, well, maybe I'll be able to bring it with me and I wanna see if I can finish it. So um, I made a lot of progress and I do think I'll be able to finish it. So this is my Cumulus um, tee, which I modified to have longer sleeves. Um, these are, these should be full length on me. I think they're about 14 inches. So I just continued the decreases that were recommended at a slightly um, like longer repeat um, because I didn't want them to be like super tight on my wrist. And I already did the I cord. It's not blocked, so it's kind of messy, but um, I did this I cord here. I did the I cord on my sleeves. And then I have one sleeve left and the body. Um, so I have about six inches on the body and I think I'll probably end up making it, I don't know, maybe like 12 inches because the, um, the yoke is a little bit longer. I sized up um, two sizes, so that would be more of an oversized fit. So I was going for like coastal grandma, um, yeah. That was my hope. I wanted it to be like ultimate coastal grandma sweater. Um, if you don't know what coastal grandma is, it's like a trend. If you think about, um, oh, I can picture her in my head. I'll put a picture up of this actress, but um, basically it's like, you know, winter white or sweaters on the beach. There's so much to coastal grandma that I don't know, but that was the one thing I picked up on that I wanted to really, um, it was attainable for me, was getting like an oversized white sweater and wearing it at the beach. <laughs> so um, yes, very excited because I think it's going to work out as long as it's not too big. I hope it's not. I like measured all the sizes and as long as my gauge, like my gauge swatch is true, then it should fit how I'm hoping, but we'll see. There's always a chance it may not because that's something that I struggle with. Even when I gauge swatch and I do it like in the round or flat or whatever, sometimes it's still not quite how I want it to fit. So I'm hoping like blocking can help or just the fact that like um, I wanted it to be oversized. So maybe if it's a little too oversized, then it will work. I don't know, we'll see. Um, so I'm hoping to finish this in the next couple of weeks. Maybe it'll be on my um, next episode. Okay. <clears throat> I have one more work in progress. So there's a backstory for this one. <laughs> I don't know how many of you are gift knitters. Um, first of all, I just want to say knitting for yourself is not selfish. I know it's like popular people say, oh, selfish knitting, or I'm such a selfish knitter, which is fine if you want to say it like that. But if somebody else calls you a selfish knitter, not okay it's your own personal hobby like it's okay to make yourself a bunch of sweaters or socks or whatever you want to make at least that's my opinion you can tell them that somebody on youtube said it was okay <laughs> and you don't have to knit for anyone besides yourself unless you want to but i personally want to um a lot of times i want to knit for um my family or my loved ones and so I um, often get really stressed out about it. <laughs> and so I will spend like days and nights awake knitting before Christmas, trying to finish up because there's always another person I feel like, oh gosh, I should knit them, I should knit them. And so it really runs away from me and it's overwhelming. And then it makes me not wanna knit for a long time. And that's just not the case. And that's not how I feel either. Like to see someone else wearing a knit is so special that I knitted it and they're wearing it what? That's crazy. And so I really do love it. And I love to gift knit, but I get overwhelmed because I think about other people's expectations and um, my own expectations. And so just different things like that. It's complicated. You know, you're a knitter. <laughs> You've been there too, I'm sure. So anyway, I've decided this year and probably going forward. Anyway, I said I would knit them something for their birthday. And so 
I said this year 2022 is going to be the year of socks. So I knit um, my sister a pair, I knit my mom a pair, and um, my brother-in-law, he has just picked up knitting. So I think, Caleb, if you're watching, <laughs> I think I might actually gift him the sock yarn that I purchased for his socks and then maybe a pair of needles too and then let him make them. Um, and But my dad and my husband and my son have birthdays in the next, like they already had their birthday when I made this announcement. <laughs> and so, and my nephew, Micah, I did not make him socks. Um, maybe I should. Abby, let me know if Micah wants a pair of socks. <laughs> I didn't knit him anything. Hmm. Sorry, Micah. I don't know. I just got so excited about getting him all these other gifts that I got him maybe a few too many things. But <laughs> um, anyway, so I um, am planning to make my husband something for Christmas, but then that left my dad. So I was like, oh man, I made him socks last year for Christmas. So he already got a pair of socks. And so I, anyway... It's a long story, but still like help me be better at doing something I love, which is gifting someone something that I knit. And so anyway, I was really excited about it, but it left sort of left my dad out to dry. So I know he's been hoping, not asking, just hoping. I can tell. I know it. Every time he sees a new sweater, he's like, ooh, that's soft, like one I've made. And so I know like he is hoping one day I'll make him one. I made my mom one. And so anyway, I just have a hard time finding a pattern that I think looks like him or a pattern that is a male fitting, like wider shoulders or whatever. Plus the cost is a lot, um, you know, for like a birthday gift, I try to keep them all equal. So <laughs> that would up my budget a lot. But anyway, I am so excited because I found um, some yarn that I wanted to use. It's actually the same yarn I used for that um, first finished object I shared, but it's a Cascade Eco Wool, and it comes in like these big, huge <laughs> skeins or hanks, and um, it's worsted bulky, maybe, and so I got this color, which is like a him color. He wears gray all the time, and I wound it up, and it's like still, I still have some over here because it wouldn't all fit on my ball winder, <laughs> so it's like I'm carrying all this around at once, but I found a couple of patterns that he liked and are that I sent him and he liked them. But I was thinking about it and I was like, you know what's one thing better than like wearing a sweater your daughter knit? Wearing a sweater your daughter designed and knit. So I'm making him an adult version of the Micah's Raglan sweater. So um I don't have the adult version, like I'm I'm not planning to <laughs> release it or anything, but this is sort of a trial run on, you know, what it's like to design a unisex um, garment for adults. Um, there are not a lot out there because um, everyone is shaped so differently. And so people tend to break them down into like male or female. So I, th I do think it's important to have like a different fit for different bodies because you want to have a good fitting garment. I would also want it to be like extremely size inclusive. And so there's a lot that goes into it and my brain can't really wrap um, around all of that right now. So anyway, I'm just making it for him. And so I swatched, I made a new gauge and regraded the sweater pattern. And I've just been knitting it. I started it last night because I was just like panic cast on his birthday is not for like five, four or five months, but yeah, I just wanted to get it started so that um, it wasn't January and I had nothing. So it's going really fast. Um, I am planning to do like the body or the yoke in August, the body in September, and then a sleeve each in November and October. So I'll just have it done and sitting and waiting for his birthday. Um, but yes, if you haven't seen my um, Micah's Raglan sweater, it's um, a simple Raglan and it has um, these uh, cabled Raglan seams. Um, it has like a folded neckband and cuffed sleeves, which I don't think I'm gonna cuff his sleeves. I think cuff sleeves maybe are more, I designed them like if your child arms grow, then you can just uncuff them. But 
I don't think he'll need that. I did add short rows to his so that it's um, higher in the back so it'll just fit like over his shoulders, like that shoulder drop that you're counting for, like the inch of shoulder drop. Anyway, I don't know. <laughs> um, so yes, I don't think it will be like a huge undertaking. I thought it would be a huge undertaking, but now that I've already knit like three or so inches um, up here, like it's going to be a labor of love for sure, but all knits are, right? Regardless of, of the size. So I'm very excited about it. I am nervous about the fit, obviously. I did the calculations based on a sweater that he wears often for work that my mom um, brought over. And so I'm just making it to fit the same, or like to be the same size as that sweater. And so I'm hoping that that sweater still fits him well. I mean, she said it's one, it just came back from the dry cleaner, so. Anyway, um, but also like trusting my gauge swatch and my calculations on my spreadsheet and all of that is just nerve wracking. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, I will definitely have this one for a while to share in my whip so you get to see it grow um, throughout the rest of the year. So those are all my projects right now. I also don't have any acquisitions. I haven't purchased yarn in a while. Um, I guess. <laughs> I was trying to be more mindful this year about my yarn purchases and spend less time looking at collections that I know I won't be buying because a lot of times I just want the yarn <laughs> and I don't have a pattern in mind or a design in mind or a gift. And so this year I was really trying to be mindful of um, my stash and it's okay if you aren't, it doesn't matter, it's just personal. <laughs> but um, I have been, I, I wanted to share instead of acquisitions, some new patterns that just came out um, that I um, have enjoyed seeing. So one of them is um, by Jen P. That's her handle, it's like JP Knits Things. Um, it's Gone to Seed. So that is a beautiful top. And a lot of people that I follow test knit that design. And it has these gorgeous, um, details like lace details and a v-neck and it has buttons down the front it's absolutely gorgeous um i don't remember which yarn i think she used like the fiber company maybe and they have like a they have a um i don't know what's called <laughs> they have like a they have kits yes they have kits available um, for her pattern. So that is one pattern that is on my Instagram right now that I just think is truly lovely. And I think maybe I'll add it to my knit list for next spring, or maybe like the end of winter next spring. It just looks like a beautiful top. It would also be cute with like a, um, maybe like a lettuce rib mock neck, um, like a white shirt with a sort of tan, one. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. I'm going to share, I'll share like a tester picture, one of Jen's pics in the corner. Um, okay. So she also, I've learned so much about sustainability in knitting and like slow fashion knitting, being intentional with your knitwear. If that's one of your goals, she's a great resource. Um, she has a lot of free resources, but also paid resources. If you want to support, um, her work, she does design work, but also like coaching. Um, and yeah, it's just fun to see the pattern come out and see how it aligns with her values. Very cool. Um, and then I wanted to share um, a new podcast I started watching. And for the life of me, I cannot remember the name of the podcast, but I will link it and I'll share a picture. Oh, it's called We'll Make Things Work. <laughs> so I'm giving her a shout out because I just watched her episode on YouTube. It was super fun. And um, I liked her projects. And she is based in um, Australia, I believe. And so her calendar is like flipped with mine because I'm in the Northern Hemisphere. hemisphere. So I like um, seeing like what she's knitting for her winter. And then she's just starting up on her spring projects. And so that's fun to watch. And then I also wanted to chat about some yarns that I have seen recently. Um, that are dropping so soon. One is the Woolberry collection that's coming out and then the second one is the Sorella. So I actually live in the same area as, um, I don't remember her name, the Sorella 
lady, <laughs> designer, dyer. Um, and so I went to a pop-up and looked at her yarn and it's beautiful. But she's getting me with this Two of Wands collaboration. Um, it's all like New York City themed based. I don't know. It makes me want to move there. Um, not really, but like kind of like at least just spend like some fall time there. Um, it's beautiful. The yarn is just lovely. All of it. It's beautiful. And then also the Woolberry collection right now. It's all so good. So let me know if you're planning to buy any of those and what you're going to knit with them. And I can live vicariously through you. I have thought about purchasing Sorella because I've never purchased her yarn before and she is local to me so I thought that would be kind of cool um but then I also thought about Woolberry because I just really like her yarn and I've been saving up for a sweaters quantity for this year so we'll see anyway I hope you have a great weekend thanks for watching as always um don't forget to like comment and subscribe <laughs> so you can hear um, what I'm up to and what I'm knitting and designing. Have a great weekend and happy knitting. <laughs>